Awareness is just the ability to watch one's own thoughts or to understand oneself in a real time. You'll be able to go back to that stillness in your life whenever you need it. We're actually gonna start programming your brain so that this happens automatically. So the more uh, perspective you have on yourself, the better you're able to overcome those obstacles. I wanna give you that objectivity so you can look at situations and say, hmm, this is how I feel in the moment, however, I can feel different later. But imagine the power that you would have in your life, the freedom you would have in your life if you had the ability to just control your impulses a little bit better. See what I'm feeling, observe what I'm feeling, observe the situation within me, outside of me, observe how my body is responding, and choose the response. I got something very special for you today in this video. I was thinking about what could help you in this time of your life where you're uncertain about what happens the next week, next month from now. I think being centered and grounded is definitely the thing for you. And I know it helped me a lot, so I wanna share with you some of my best meditations that I've done in this video and over the next few weeks that allow you to just whoosh, lock in, feel comfortable, feel productive, uh, be happy to wake up every single day and be excited about the opportunities that are in front of you. So we're gonna get into that in this video. Before I give it to you, be sure to like, comment, and share this video with friends and family that can benefit from it as well. Now in the last few weeks on my channel and on my live streams, I've been talking about the problems I've been helping people solve. And I have a group of 30 people that I help solve these problems, but individually I reached out to you and I said, what are the challenges you're having with your girlfriend? Maybe getting her to do things a little bit more adventurous and outside the usual. Maybe being able to persuade your boss and influence people around you. Or you're trapped at home, anxious, and you feel like you don't really know what you would do and how to socialize people outside of the house. Things like that that are on your mind. So I've taken questions on the internet and I said, hey, if I did a program that helped you with these things, would it be something you're interested in? And the response that I got was just crazy. It's overwhelming, insane. I'll read you some of the responses I got right now. Yes, in my social life, but also my business. Just how to smoothly deal with people in general. Uh, this guy says, another dude says, yeah, man, that would have a huge impact on my life. Probably the best option for my situation right now. Other guys are like, yeah, man, yeah, definitely would be interested. Make me a pimp, I've always wanted to be. Yes, yes, yes. Another guy says, yo, Madison, getting good at influencing and getting into people's heads at the top of my list. He mentions he's in business, he has to work on his dating life, and mastering the phone conversation is a necessity for him. Another guy says, yo, man, on a personal note, had a long-term relationship for many years, and I couldn't see her very often, so yeah, this would definitely help. So without further ado, yes, guys, I'm gonna do it. I am going to do the Smooth Conversation Coaching Program because I would be doing you a disservice if I did nothing, okay? You're clearly in pain, tons of pain, and uh, you need my help. I'm gonna open up the enrollment on Wednesday, April the 8th, and uh, we'll start the enrollment then. And I'm not just gonna give you a program. I don't wanna just sell you something. This is for a particular type of person. If you're not this person and I can't help you, this is not for you. This is for someone who wants to develop self-esteem and be more liked through those conversations they're having. This is for someone who wants to influence people around them and be able to have smooth conversations. This is for someone who has a girlfriend, somebody you're seeing, and they wanna have more control in relationships and of themselves, be able to express who they actually are. This is about helping somebody who's stuck in the room with anxiety and has a fear of even getting out of the house or someone who wants to take their online dating profiles and mix it with Instagram together in a funnel and have people automatically come into his life. Just understand that I'm capping it to 10 people and that's not just because I'm busy it's because I want to make sure they get results. I want to put all my effort into these 10 people. 10 out of 10 people walk away guaranteed to be a smooth conversationalist. If you're a person that wants to be able to influence conversations around you and bend situations to your will, get what you always wanted, uh, have rock solid inner confidence and social skills to match, and be a smooth conversationalist, then this is for you, okay? Coming out very, very soon. Application starting Wednesday, April the 8th. Now, with all that said and done, without any further ado, let's get into today's video. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to, every day, 10 minutes a day, if you can get to 10 minutes. You might only be able to start with five, that's fine. But every day, for about three or four days, okay? Five minutes, then 10, build up to 15 if you can. I want you to sit in the chair. Chair just like this. Might not have, a, might not have an armrest here. Might just be a regular chair. Um, you know, not a stool, one with a backing, hopefully. I want you to sit in the chair. 
I want to demonstrate what I want you to do. I want you to sit in the chair and I want you to not move your body. Not a finger, not a toe, not a knee. If you have a scratch, you do not scratch it. If you have an itch, you do not itch it. I want you to just sit in the chair. Now, there's several levels of awareness, right? There's awareness of your mind, socially, your environment. We talked about that as well. And there's awareness of your body. We can't even start with mind awareness yet. You're not there yet. You're not ready for it yet, okay? So we're going to start at the ground level. You already have control of your body, so we're going to start with awareness of your body, okay? You are aware of your body somewhat already. You know when you're sick. You know when you feel pain. You know when you're hungry. So what I want you to do is sit in that chair for five minutes at first. Build up to 10 if you can. And do not move your body. Breathe normally, okay? You can look wherever you want to in the room. It's absolutely fine. I prefer you look straight forward. And just don't move. Your mind can go anywhere, okay? Your mind can race around. Your mind can think of thoughts. Your mind can think, this is stupid. Your mind can think, this is great. Your mind can think, how am I gonna do this every day? I don't care what your mind thinks. Your mind is not the goal right now. Your mind can, is free to roam. We're just focusing on awareness of your body. So you sit in this chair and you don't move. And you recognize the impulses of your body. Recognize the impulse for you to want to move your leg. Recognize the desire for you to want to move your shoulders. The desire for you to want to get up. The itch on your heel. The tag of your shirt that's new, scratching your, your abs, right? Recognize the experience of your body and that's it. Just recognize the experience of your body. Observe the experience of your body and do nothing about it. There is nothing to do. Just observe. Just be aware. And I want you to sit in the chair, eyes open. Very important to have eyes open. The reason for that is as you go through life, your eyes aren't closed. I see a lot of people that learn meditation with their eyes closed. It's great. It's interesting. You know, it's, it helps. It's a starting point. But what you realize is that life happens with your eyes open. Stimulus happens with your eyes open, right? There's stuff to notice, to see, to observe with your eyes open. So I want you to do it with your eyes open. It'll help you in the longer run in the, in the real world. So again, in the chair with your eyes open, not moving at all, I want you to breathe. Now, you were always breathing before. This time I want you to be aware of your breath. I want you to be aware of the in and the chest expanding and then the out and the chest deflating and then the in expanding and the out, okay? The idea is not to force the breath to happen. You have to go in, out. Okay, you're not forcing it. You're just letting it happen. Okay, that's all it is. Now, this is a step a little bit uh, beyond what we were doing before, and it differs because before it was just your body, but now it's your body and you're in synchronization with your body. Your body, you're not fighting it, it's trying to resist for moving, now you're actually using it as a tool. And I want you to just go back to the normal breathing. Okay, in and out. In and out. Now, once you start to become aware of your breathing and you start to get a little bit of a rhythm, I want you to now turn your focus to your mind. I want you to start observing your thoughts about the exercise you just did when you wrote down your feelings for the week from one to five. You're gonna start to notice judgments. What, why was I so upset? I'm not upset, da, da, da. Just observe it. You might say, hmm, I had a responsibility. That was a four. I had a lot of responsibility. Good job. You're stepping it up. Proud of myself. Okay? Just observe it. 
Don't judge it, just observe it. You might have a three for the unknown. You're anxious about the unknown. What the previous, or sorry, not previous, but what the next week is going to bring. Are you able to pay rent? Are you able to get that exam done in time? Are you able to make that new friend you want? Are you going to be able to get girls? Are you going to go out this weekend and you're not sure if you're going to be prepared? How much anxious you're having? How do you feel about the anxiousness? Just observe it. You might realize that you're bored as fuck. You might say, hey, I'm so bored. I don't know why I'm bored. I'm bored in life, bored in my day. I just had this general feeling of being bored the whole week. I have no idea why. That's cool. Don't try to make sense of it. Just observe it. You might even have a sense of pride, the fact that you're doing this and you're growing. That's cool. Don't attach to it too much. Ego's not healthy either. Just observe it. All right? So I want you to do this again for three or four days. And then after you're done with this, you can go to the next video. It's very, very important. Very important to do this. If you notice you haven't done it, don't continue the program. Stop. Continue to do this three or four days in a row. And once you've done it the three or four days, then continue to the next video. This is going to be the foundation of everything else that we have. You can't build honor, virtue, integrity, character-based stuff if you can't know what you're experiencing and feeling. Okay? We can't reprogram your mind unless you're aware of what your mind's doing and aware of the thoughts that your mind has on a regular basis, the patterns and the triggers and all that good stuff. All right? So what can awareness help you to understand? How is it a useful tool? I'm going to give you an example here. All right? The example is meat. That's it, meat. Let me ask you a question. Does meat exist? Does it exist? You're thinking to yourself, Madison, that's a stupid ass question, right? Meat exists. Um, I go to a restaurant, I eat meat. Uh, I enjoy shopping for it. Maybe you're vegan, you don't, and you're like, I don't eat meat. You know, you, the word exists. Of course, meat exists. But I want you to use your awareness skill for a second. All right, what level you're at, try to understand this for a second, okay? You might not grasp it right away, but in time, it'll make sense. Meat doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Meat is a construct of the mind. How do I know that? Because I'm aware of what the word meat means to my mind. What is meat? Meat is just flesh. That's what it is. It's the body and it's flesh. And therefore, after that, the mind constructs a label and calls it meat. Maybe it makes us feel safer when we call it meat. Maybe it makes us feel guilty from saying animal flesh, right? Cow liver. Excuse me, I like one of the cow livers, please, at a restaurant. How would that make you feel? Or you say to yourself, um, excuse me, I'll have that heart of that, you know, that, that pig or, or whatever the fuck it is, right? You wouldn't feel good saying that. So what do we do? Their mind constructs this word called meat to make us feel better about the fact that we're eating animal flesh, the fact that we've killed an animal, okay? Now, I don't say this to be rude or crude or to insult you in any way. I say this so you recognize the reality of it. You recognize that your mind is always assessing situations and things and labeling them. You're probably not even aware of that process that your mind has automatically. But through awareness, you can break that down. It'll make more sense to you. And you can also apply that awareness to various areas of your life. I'm going to now talk about a book recommended to me by a buddy of mine, Ty Lopez. And he says, uh, it's Peter Drucker's Managing Oneself. Okay, so in order to even pick up the book, let's just first talk about that. In order to even pick up the book Managing Oneself, you have to have an awareness that you pretty much suck in some area, you're lacking in one area in managing yourself. You just have to have that awareness, okay? So imagine you didn't even have that awareness, but somebody's like, yo, you should buy this book. And you're like, okay, I guess I will buy the book. My friend who's successful said he reads it, so I'll read it too. You pick up the book, explains all these details, things you could do, okay, to manage yourself. But what happens? 
you can't put into action. You cannot put into practice. Why? Because you don't have the awareness to manage yourself. So that's why awareness is so key. Awareness will allow you to execute everything you have in a book. It will allow you to execute everything that you learn from mentors, from colleagues, from friends. It's going to allow you to know what your strengths are and what you're doing well and also where you're lacking and where you're not doing so well. That awareness is the key. Without the awareness, you have nothing. You have nothing. You have no personal management. All personal management comes from awareness. Fuck managing other people. Are you kidding me? Give me a break. How are you going to manage other people if you can't manage yourself? So that personal awareness is the key. The personal awareness is where it all starts, where it all begins. That personal management, all right? So whenever you think about those things, I want you to keep that in mind. What you're giving yourself is this. You're going to give yourself a gift. And the gift you are now giving yourself is the ability to stop being reactive in life. Stop reacting to experiences. Stop reacting to expectations. Stop reacting to things not working out the way you want them to. Stop reacting. Okay? Reacting is a, is a fucking curse, man. It's a curse. You know? Um, you always hear these examples of people who win the lottery and then within three years of winning the lottery at five, they're broke. Why? Because they're reacting to winning the lottery. Okay? There's a reaction there. So I want to take you out of being reactive and now give you this gift, this knowledge. Okay? You are a wizard, Harry, like Harry Potter. You're a wizard now, Harry. I want to move you to being proactive. Imagine every single thing that you experience, that you're going to go through, that you're going to feel, you can now be proactive. You can, you can attack it before it even happens. You can handle it before it happens to you. And that's a choice that you always have. That, that is your gift and birthright as a human being. To not just experience things and say, hey, that was the past. I don't know how to control it. You know, that's the past. And, but to actually learn from the past, be proactive, and anticipate the future. That's why I give you that example before of a pilot with turbulence coming up. He's like, oh, there's turbulence. He knows it's going to come. He anticipates it. He's proactive about it. He's studied it, right? He's calmed himself before that happens. What does a pilot do? Gets on the intercom. Bing! Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have some turbulence coming up in two or three minutes. Put your seatbelts on. Okay? Imagine being able to do that in your life. Knowing you're going to go into a situation and be scared and you can handle it, right? You know that you're going to go to that club and there's going to be girls there or guys there and loud music. You know that's going to happen. You can anticipate that and you can choose to have a proactive response uh, and manage yourself. You know that you're going to uh, go to work and have a stressful day because it's a presentation. You can choose to steady yourself as you go into it because you're aware of your anxiety. Okay? The famous philosopher Aristotle had an amazing quote about this and I think it really encompasses everything. Okay? And that quote is about anger. It's very fucking easy to be anger. Be angry. To have anger, be angry. Okay? You've had anger before. You have it. You'll have it again. It's not a bad emotion. It's not, not a bad thing to have. Sometimes it's very right. Okay? The emotion of anger is never misplaced if somebody does you wrong. The emotion of anger is valid if somebody steals from you, hurts you, cheats you, mistreats you. It makes sense to have that anger inside, okay? So you can have anger. You're allowed to have anger. Now, the challenge of anger is this, what Aristotle said. Aristotle said the challenge is not to be angry, but to have it for the right amount, and for the right length, and to the right degree, and for the right person, okay? Think about that. Degree, length, right amount, for the right person. Often, our anger is misplaced, or our anger is too long, or our anger is too much, or it's too fast, too sharp. Being angry is easy. Being angry for the right amount, and the right length, and all that stuff is hard. You can think of situations where you've had a, uh, somebody do you wrong, and you couldn't let go of the grudge. You just held on to the grudge. You don't know why. They said they're sorry, but you're still holding on to the grudge. 
You can think of a time where somebody kind of maybe bumped you, like are people you see in traffic, right? For example, people are driving in traffic, somebody cuts them off, what do they do? Motherfucker, I'm gonna kill you! Bam! Street fights. Over traffic? What? It's crazy, all right? That's too much anger, too much anger. Misdirected anger. Um, a girl can be hurt, a girl can have her heart broken by some guy who you know, didn't treat her so well. What does she do? Takes it all out on you. Oh, it's your, it's your turn to, to enjoy the baggage. It's your turn to have fun with that. All, right? she, all of her anger is now directed towards you, the wrong person. All right? There's so many ways to have anger uh, misdirected. But the more awareness you can have for yourself and empathy you can have for others, you can, you can help them with that anger. You can even teach them through the anger and have them become aware of themselves and use anger as a tool. I think that, um, I think that for everyone, awareness is one of these tools that allows you to, or maybe not even a tool, it is at some points, I call it also understanding. It's an understanding of life and yourself that allows you to stretch out and pace and be in the driver's seat of your thoughts and your emotions. What I want you to do is this. I want you to do a little exercise for me. I want you to take up pen and paper, like, or you know, you can do it on your computer, I don't really care. But if you do it with pen and paper, it might shock you a little bit more, and I kind of want you to be shocked. You can kind of get the guessing or the feeling. I, I like shocking you a little bit, right? The abrasive gentleman communication I have. Now, what I want you to do is take out that pen, take out that paper, and I want you to review your week. Now, listen, I have a hard time reviewing my week. Sometimes I can't even think about what I ate for breakfast. Uh, today, I skipped breakfast. I had a uh, for dinner, I had like a salad and some blueberries. I don't even know what I ate yesterday for, for, for dinner. I have no idea. So it's hard sometimes, but just kind of get a general idea of what your week's been like. Not the food you ate, but the emotions you've had throughout the week, okay? How often throughout the week did you feel angry? How often throughout the week did you feel blessed or appreciative? How often throughout the week did you feel unsure, scared, uncertain? How often throughout the week did you feel, hmm, happy and excited, maybe like six or seven emotions, okay? And I want you to rate it by a one to five. So one to five scale. Happy maybe was a four. Um, anxious maybe was a two. Um, depending on what you're going through in your life, you may have various degrees. If you just had a, you know, a new job you're going through, you might, your anxious might be like a five. Um, your happiness might be a five as well. Um, depending on what you're going through, you're just gonna have different levels. But go through each one of those emotions and rate them one to five. And what I want you to do is get a general awareness of the state that you're always in, in your life. What is the state that you're generally in? 